Thank you. To welcome everybody to the People's Church of Divine God to see Sunday service. Thank you for coming today. Got the housekeeping rules. If you have a cell phone, please put it on silent unless you're law enforcement or medical personnel. The restrooms are down the hall, quick right, quick left. And there's a hot coffee, a bunch of homemade goodies back there I saw. Right? Help yourself to those, coffee or cold drinks out of the fridge in the back at any time during the service. We're pretty informal here. I'd like to have uh, Michael Griffin, Mike Candle, symbolizing the unity of body, mind, and spirit to start the service. <coughs> of this moment, and may we share with love and joy as this moment progresses. We give thanks for your blessings and guidance. Amen. 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 In the gold pages, hymn number 11, Peace Like a River. I got peace like a river. which is before you seems right. 
whether it's challenging, whether it's happy, whether it's whatever the condition of it is, that which is before you seems right. And you approach it with the right attitude. Remember there was this uh, singer called Marissa Allison, I think it was, and she had this song, and one of the refrains is in it, said, it isn't getting what you want, it's wanting what you got. And that's pretty much to the point of it. Becoming spiritual doesn't mean that you're going to have your, wipe, your life wiped away and have no more challenges and be happy and joyous from that day forward. You can be happy and joyous, but it's a personal decision. It's something that you bring into your life, not something that is brought into your life from outside. It's done by consistent self-introspection, consistent belief in something greater than yourself, and a consistent application of it time and time again. I've said this before, uh, a reoccurring theme with me now, is that the reason that you have so many spiritual principles that you read, that you remind yourself of, and so many different thought things that go through your mind about spiritual evolution is so that when something sudden happens to you, you remember about 1% of them. If you remember one spiritual thing, second nature, that you don't have to bring forward by effort, then it makes the whole situation better. And you see this in martial arts a lot. They teach you 50 or 60 moves that you do a thousand times just in the air. People say, well, that's a waste. Well, it's not, because the whole theory behind that is that when something sudden happens, you'll remember about four or five of those 50 moves, second nature. The ones that you resonate most with will come out. The ones that are most natural to you as a person and as an individual will come out. And spiritual discipline is the same way. You learn all these things, all these books, all these principles, and the ones that resonate with you most personally will be the ones that come out second nature in times of duress, times of distress. So that's why we need this daily effort of meditation, a daily effort of prayer if that's what you're into. You need these repetitive things, not so that you can believe them, but so that they become second nature in your subconscious so that they're as automatic as the instincts that you have genetically put into you over millions of years of evolution, which is what they try to contradict or counteract. It has to be second nature to you. Because if you have to sit there and brain your way through your emotions, you kind of lose the battle. It has to be as automatic as your emotions or your instincts are. So do the homework. Build your insurance policy up by doing your meditation daily, and it will serve you when the time comes. And it's your choice to act on it or not act on it. And a good guideline for it is when you're in this state of duress and you feel like you're being choked by the situation before you, and this thought comes trickling out of your mind that tells you something else to do, some other way of thinking, you go, that can't be it. That's too simple. That's probably the right thing to do. Because spirit is simple. It's direct. It doesn't explain itself. It stands on its own. And when you hear it, truth is truth. And that's what it is. It doesn't need explanation. It doesn't need justification. You know the rightness of it, just like you know the rightness of your life when you're on the path. The same things are before you. The same people are in your life but there seems a rightness to what you're doing. Thank you for listening. This church has always been blessed with having live musicians in it, and that's always a critical part of the services. My co-founder, Ronnie Austin, used to say that church is like a three-legged stool, the people, the message, and the music. And so we pretty well have that well balanced. So thank you all for your part. Thank you very much, Larry, for the love and graciousness that you put in that. Definitely raises the spirit to sit in that creative presence and have it. <coughs> the next portion of the service is the uh, contact healing portion. <coughs>
ask him whether this is a guided meditation. And um, the way this works is the healers stand behind the chairs. There's three chairs in the back. You'll hear this during the service, which means a healing chair has become vacant. And you can usually it's the chairs in the back, so just go back there and have a seat. That way you can enjoy the meditation and still get a contact healing. <clears throat> so um, let's see, I mean, Lorraine, are you going to heal today? Anne, are you going to heal today? Good. So we'll have Lorraine and we need a contact healing. We'll start the service by reading the prayer for spiritual healing in gold on the back of the hymnal. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and the power of God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's get ready for the meditation. Sit in a comfortable position where there is no any tension or stress on your physical body. Gently close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. Inhale and exhale. Do it a few times. Breathe in. Your body becoming more and more relaxed. Let go of the thoughts that are on your mind. In your exhale, just breathe it out. Connect with this peaceful presence. While you breathe, repeat to yourself quietly. I am at peace within and with my surroundings.
you are meant to be at This is your divine presence, your divine truth. You are meant to be at peace. Embrace this peacefulness of your consciousness and be still. It is in this stillness that you experience wholeness. It is in the silence and the quietness that you feel content. Content with who you are. You are an infinite being. You are a multi-dimensional being. Become aware of your infinite self. While you breathe, feel your consciousness rising high. higher above your head and connecting with your higher self to the presence of God. are no thoughts in this state of consciousness. It is a pure state of being. A pure state of heightened awareness. Become aware of this mighty presence that is within your consciousness. And in this and the silence of your mind. You hear the voice of your Creator, the Omnipresence. The inner voice that speaks through your intuition. <coughs> the voice of God. Voice of I am presence, the voice of truth. I am infinite. I am pure and perfect. 
I am manifestation of Christ consciousness, the universal consciousness. In this physical reality, I am capable of manifesting, creating, materializing my thoughts, my intentions that serves the highest good, the highest good. I am the Divine Presence within each soul that speaks the truth. Surrender to your I am presence. You ask for divine intervention for your higher self to be in charge. In charge of your life. to the perfection of your spirit. Spirit is perfect. In a spirit we are all connected to one consciousness, a universal consciousness. the same creative power that governs the universe and every sentient being. That creative power is within each one of us. Become aware of the power of God. and surrender to the will of God. With the knowing that serves the highest good,
Allow God to think. Allow God to be. Feel God's creativity unfolding through your thinking process. God's power and the will unfolding through your actions as you act and interact with others. You see the positive. You see the goodness in everyone and in every situation. God, all things are possible. Surrender to the will of God. Let go and let God be. of your higher consciousness down to your physical body and integrated in this physical plane in this physical reality as you act and interact as a human Follow the guidelines of your higher consciousness and the truth of your higher self. <clears throat> Put it into action. Create the reality that you desire. And live your truth within those realities. You have the power to create. Create heaven on earth. Always hold your highest intentions for love, peace, and harmony. Be the instrument for love.
Let there be peace on earth, let it begin with us. Let there be love on earth, let it begin. exactly where I was. I went back to that very same spot numerous times uh, just so I could have that experience and remember. And uh, so Spirit eventually brought me here and uh, I'm very happy to be here and now I'm here, I'm here with you and I'm very excited about being here. Uh, and I was talking about playing basketball because of my height. So I'm, I'm a Hoosier. I'm from Indiana. Hey. And when you're from Indiana, they make you play basketball if you're over six foot. <laughs> and uh, I kept telling them, I said, I don't want to play basketball. I want to play music. And I was also, my hobby at the, as a child was I was a magician. I like magic tricks. So I told him, I said, I don't want to be a magician. And he said, no, you got to get a real job. <laughs> so I went to college, got a real job. Worked in that field for maybe a couple of years. I'm into sales. And when I was in sales, I realized I could be a magician. <laughs> because people were buying from me because they liked me, not because of what I was selling them. And when you realize uh, the gift you have within you that you have to give to people, uh, you can do anything you want. Whatever your heart's desire is, whatever you, whatever's in your heart. So I discovered that at an early age. So I pursued a career as a professional magician. And that's how I ended up moving down here, because I ended up working on a cruise ship down at Port Canaveral. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, hey, I'm going to buy a house down here. I don't like that cold weather up there in Indiana. So I came down here my first winter, and I said, I'm not going to go back. <laughs> I didn't go back, and I've been here 14 years ever since. So then in that midst of that, I'm asking God, why am I here? Because um, my family was, is all back up in Indiana, and, and uh, my kids. and and my parents, and, and uh, so I was trying to connect, and it was during this time over the last 14 years, I've been going through this major shift in consciousness, this major shift in my awareness as to who I am. Now, you have to understand, I came from a Christian background. I was raised in a Christian uh, fundamentalist church, and so I, this, this experience that I was having was, is revolutionary for me, as I'm sure it has been for you. Yeah, so, um, so in the midst of this, shift that I've been going through the last uh, 14 years or so, um, I'm seeing not only my own sh shift of consciousness, but I'm seeing a collective shift in consciousness. 
Uh, now, so that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. I'm going to talk about where we're all going, uh, because uh, you know, Steve mentioned a while ago that you know that, that we're we're, we're facing we've been facing a lot of challenges. And how do you know if you're on a spiritual path? Well, I think that there is a map that's beginning to show up. Now, it's not the kind of map that's not the kind of map that you open up. And, well, some of you younger people don't know. Remember this, but we used to have paper maps. <laughs> you know, <for> <laughs> Now we have these GPS machines uh, to do, do it for us. But what we do have within us is the Holy Spirit, which is like our spiritual GPS. How many of you believe that? How many of you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So in my opinion, that is the map. And, and so what happens is it begins to, um, the map begins to reveal itself in a most unique way. Now, in my early years, it was just like, wow. Everything was just like, wow. You know, now it's starting to get more nitty gritty and spirits begin to show me more distinctly as to what that map is and some of the actual distincts and some of the signs. I know he said we don't have signs, you know, right? and we, had, we didn't have signs for many years throughout our, our evolution and consciousness, but we are beginning to experience signs, and I'm going to share a little bit of that with you, and then I don't know if you, any of you know I'm doing a workshop this, this, uh, this afternoon downstairs, and I'm going to go in great detail with some, about some of that stuff. Um, well, let me, uh, let's see, this is the, uh, this is the, the, the worksheets that we're going to be doing in this afternoon. But I wanted to show you, uh, hang on here, one page in particular. Here it is. Now, it looks kind of small here. I wish I had it bigger. But see the, see the different levels here? There's different levels in this page. Can you see that? This, in a sense, is a map. Now, it is a, um, they're just words. The words is all they are. Because that's what we have. That's all we have to work with right now. I mean, until you come into a place where you're experiencing full vibration, then we have, we use our words. So until we understand uh, our awareness of who the Spirit of God is within us, we only have our minds to work with, right? I mean, when I was a small child, I went to church and I was told certain things, and I was programmed to believe certain things, and uh, needless to say, I've had to let go of a lot of those programs. Uh, but what I, one thing I was programmed, I was programmed to believe that God lived within every person, and that I was, should be able to see God within every person I looked at. Well, needless to say, uh, it didn't work quite work that way for me. I, I, I wanted to, I mean, I believed it, but I just didn't see God in everybody until I came into this new awakening. And as I begin to come into this new revolution, this new evolution of consciousness, today I can tell you I see God in every one of you, without a doubt. In fact, I can look into your eyes, I can look into your heart, and I can tell you that which is God, the, the part of that I perceive of God within you. Because the truth of it is, as I look into you, into your eyes, and into your soul, into your mind, and your heart, I see myself. Because we are all connected together. We're all a part of one another in spirit. Now in flesh, you know, we look a lot different. You feel funny living on my body. <laughs> I feel funny living on yours. And um, my, my life in this body is a little bit different than, than probably yours is. And, and that's, but that's what we chose to do. We chose to come here and to live in these uh, vessels and understand who we are. Uh, and have this experience. That's really what we're here for, folks. People ask me all the time, well, why am I here? You're here to have this experience. So enjoy it to the fullest. But here's the secret. You get to choose what experience you want to have. It's like an amusement park. When you go to the amusement park, you get to decide which rides you want to go on and how long you want to ride on them. Of course, you have to stay in the line each time you get on. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, is that it, it, that's the way it is. It's, it's pretty much that way. So you get, to, you have a choice. Now, some people feel like, well, I don't have a choice. I am stuck. I have to. This is what I have to do. This is where I am. Well, if that's what you believe, then that's what's going, that's what you're going to experience here. But I'm going to tell you that you're not stuck. Now, when I was a young man. I felt like I was stuck. I felt like that things were happening to me that I didn't want to have to happen. I, I didn't plan these things. Why, why were these things happening to me? Ever felt like that? 
So we, we feel as though that we become victims to the circumstances. You've heard that term before, I'm, I'm a victim to the circumstances. So therefore, like Steve was saying, we have these challenges. We're constantly challenged. You know, I gotta pay the bills, I gotta work more, I gotta I gotta uh, rest, I gotta get, eat eat food, I gotta take care of my body, I got I, I'm constantly challenged. And I'm challenged a little bit more than others. And, <laughs> And the, and the challenges are real. But the question is, it's what we do with the challenges that make the difference. It's how we respond to them. And the secret to it is to, wake, to the awakening to who you really are. You've probably heard the question, I think last time I was here I spoke, I asked the question, are you a spiritual being having a human experience, or are you a human having a spiritual experience? I've asked this question to, to numerous people. I do a lot of life coaching with individuals, and that's one of the questions I usually bring up because I want to know where they're coming from. How do they see themselves? Are they a human being trying to have a spiritual experience? Or are they a spiritual being having a human experience? Those who are coming into an awakening say that I am a spiritual being having a human experience. You know, Christianity taught me that the, the, the life that Jesus was referring to was eternal life. You know, the word eternal in the Greek means has no beginning or no end. It's not just the end. It's the no beginning thing, too. Wait, wait a second. That doesn't sound right. As a Christian, I was taught that you know, I was born into this world and I had to be saved so that I could live eternal life. Well, folks, it's not quite that way. Well, I'm sorry if I shook, shook your doctrines on this. But I, 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 the point I'm making is, is that you existed before you came into this physical form. And Steve made reference to that a while ago. You know, we have been here and through our evolution of our consciousness. But for some reason, when we come into this physical form, we have amnesia and we forget who we are, right? Yes. Hello? Yes. yes. I, I guess some of you are still asleep over here. <laughs> you got where was that? Would you agree that, that we forgot who we were when we first came into this world? Yes. Yeah. And all of a sudden we had to come back into awakening and say, wait a second. Uh, I'm more than just this flesh. You know, the, the, the scripture in uh, John 3 where, where, where Nicodemus comes to Jesus. And he, he's, he here's a spiritual leader. Excuse me, I can get the reward. And um, if you read that passage lately uh, in, in John, you know, Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he says, we, I recognize that you are a spiritual man and that God is with you. And he makes knowledge of his wisdom and his uh, miracles that he was capable, capable of doing. Now you notice Nicodemus came to him at night time because he didn't want anybody to know that he was talking to Jesus. Because, you know, he could get in trouble with his other, you know, spiritual leaders. That's this. So it was kind of interesting he came to him. But what did Jesus say to him? And he said that he basically said you have to be born of uh, both the flesh and of the water. He said that you must be born from above. Now, the Christians have taken that term, you must be born again. The word again in Greek means to be from above. Uh, the Christians want you to be born again. That's all they can comprehend, you know. I mean, excuse me, I'm sounding too critical against Christianity. But the point is, is they kind of, uh, what's the word they used? Uh, a cliche, you know, be born again. It is, it's actually a born of above. So he's referring to born of the flesh and born of spirit, born of, born of spirit. And because we are both, we are both. We're both of us. Now, I'm very much aware of my flesh, you know, when I came into this world. I'm very much aware of the pain and the growth and the strength that I have with my flesh and, and the touch and the, the beauty of touch and so forth. I'm very much aware of that. But as to this evolution of consciousness, I'm beginning to become aware of that in the spiritual realm. I'm realizing that my strength the power I have within me, that I'm not just this flesh. I'm realizing that I'm not just a physical large man, that my energy and my spiritual body extends way out here just as yours does. If you could see yourself as you are in spirit form, you would think completely different about yourself. Because we always look into a mirror and we begin to see ourselves just as a reflection of our physical form. It, but it takes an awakening of the spirit within us to be able to see our true identity. All right, I brought a little diagram here. You ready? All right, this is you coming into the world, a square. 
And what happens is when you come to the physical form, we get all lined up, get next to each other, and we're trying to fit in. Ever felt like you, somehow you just didn't fit in? But yet you were stuck because you had these corners and, and you, were, uh, you were there, you were, you, were, you were squared, you were squared in. And, and sometimes the corners, because the, the points are the rough edges of it, it just didn't seem to fit in. And so you're constantly struggling trying to fit in. That's because you're focusing upon this square as the flesh, okay? Follow me? Now, sometimes we get kind of cornered into situations that we feel very uncomfortable, right? Huh? Yeah. 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 That's the corner right there. And, it's, it, it, and when we get cornered, things begin to heat up. You know why? Because that right there is 90 degrees. Well, in, inside of the square is a circle, <laughs> but you just don't see it because that is you're the spirit realm. The square is the what we see on the outward, okay? And when you realize that you are really not the square, you're the circle, you say, hey, I've been framed. <laughs> so so uh, here we are trying to fit in, and all of a sudden when we have this awakening, something miraculously happens, and so here's what happens. Boom! We become the circle. Wow. This is a little magic trick. <laughs> but here's the unique thing about this: the circle is eternal, right? And that's just, that's a representation of you. You are eternal. You have no beginning. You have no end. And 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 you need to get acquainted with who you are. So a while ago, and I, I know I've been here since I got here today talking about our higher selves and the connection to our higher selves. And that's what this is. This is, this is the real you. Now, I understand we have to live in these flesh, these, I call them space suits, the bodies that we have, you know, into this physical form, in the third dimension. But we're from a much higher dimension. That's where you came from. And as you open yourself up, and that's the key word, whoops, Hello. <laughs> Open yourself up. We're going to move this a little bit. Can we move? I'm going to keep coming back. i got more help, more headroom. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we, th this is, start thinking of yourself as a circle. And the reason why is because, see, there are no edges. There's a flow to it. In fact, you can hold it here, and it moves over here. And move it here and over here. You know why it's doing that? Because it's trying to find a balance. Now, so now it's balancing on my finger. Notice this? Folks. We all need to find balance within our lives. That's the problem. Because we here in this world, if we play in the square, in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the victim position, we feel like that we're being forced and pushed and shoved, and we're fighting with the contrast of the duality within this world. we got this over there, and this over there, and I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I'm trying to fit in. Well, there's a balance. There's a balance. And when you're in the balance, there's movement, and watch what happens. Because, see? It's, st it's still in balance, see, even though it's moving, see, there's a movement that's going on. In the square, there's not much, ba there's not much movement going on, is there? Yeah. Nope. So this is you. See yourself as this round, beautiful <coughs> figure. It, it is, it is that a, this there here is actually a reflection of your true being. Because I believe that everything is created out of the spiral. That's why I wear this on my neck. It's the spiral. Everything is created out of the spiral. And if you look at nature, you look at outer space, you see the stars, you see everything is in a spiral form. Everything is moving. Your creativity, your, all healing takes place. And you notice how sometimes healers do, healers do this, you know? Because it's the same, that's what's happening. It's, just, it's a spiral. There's a, there's a realignment that's going on. That's what's happening. <sighs> how much more time do I have? Camera's going to quit recording in about 10 minutes. But you I got 10 minutes? <laughs> I, got, I was supposed to stop 10 minutes ago? No, you got 10 minutes. Oh, I got 10 minutes. Oh, good. That's easy. Quits. All right, good. You good. can speak on your net, but the camera won't. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so now I, I want to try to get into a little bit of the nitty gritty, okay? A little bit more definitive as to what I mean as uh, making the shift. So. 
And this is part of what I'm sharing this afternoon, but I'm going to share some of it with you today, okay? Uh, and if you can come this afternoon, please do. Um, and then if you can't come, uh, pick up one of my flyers back there uh, and sign up for my website. I have a, a, a website called Ascension Consciousness. And if you go there and you sign up for it, I have a newsletter I'll, I'm starting to send out to people with, with a lot of this information. There's a lot of stuff on the website. Mrs. Ferguson already, she just signed up yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And so you can find me on the internet, and that way I can stay connected to you, all right? Um, it is Mrs. Ferguson, right? Yeah, right. I thought, I thought so. <laughs> um, all right. You'll find that on the website, in the beginning of this, of this workshop, I talk about happiness. And I believe that happiness is a measuring tool of our spiritual awareness. The, the more happy you are, the more spiritual you are. Well, what do you mean by that? And I, I, I'm being very serious about this. I really honestly believe this. If you are living your life at 80% of the time in your awakened state, and I mean uh, like versus this, this, you know, that, that state, when you're awake, then you're in, in a higher level of awareness uh, and you're on a spiritual path. You have to be. Whether you know it or not. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to say prayers. No, I believe it helps. I believe it makes a difference. I makes it make me use because most of us are not happy. So that's why we come to church. We come to fellowship and connect with one another because we find in our connectiveness with one another, we, we give energy and joy and love with one another, and that's what we all need. So, learn to connect to the inward. Now, you know, I, I'm on Facebook an awful lot, and I talk, I have 4,000 people who are, are friends with me on Facebook. That's how long I've been on there, and that's how active I am. And a lot of people will, will, are talking to me or listening to me, and uh, they will ask me, well, how do you know whether or not, uh, what you're, how do you know if, whether or not you're making decisions about what is true and what is not true? And I only have one answer for you, and that is knowing the Spirit of God within you. And that is where our happiness stems from. You can't go out there and chase happiness. You can't make, try to make somebody happy. In fact, it's not your responsibility. I'm going to tell you right now. It's not your responsibility to make anybody happy but you. And even you can't make yourself happy. Happiness is a byproduct. It comes when we discover who we are, when we open ourselves up to our true selves. When you open up and you, when you know who you are, everything changes. And there's, this enlightenment is just um, very powerful. Now, on this map I just showed you a while ago, there is a point in the map where there's a break between love and fear. The fear pulls us down. The feeling that we have the resistance of life, of love, is put, is, it, it, it identif we identify it as darkness. Because there's a separation, these lights are emanating light. But the further I get away from the light, it begins to get darker and darker, right? Because, so this is the source, and here I am. So there's a separation that's, been ta that's taken place here. But now, just because I'm over here in the darkness, or in the shadows, doesn't mean that I'm a part of the darkness. I'm a part of the light. And so I'm coming back into the light. I'm coming back into the light is what, is what I'm doing. And that's what we're doing. That's all we're doing. So, so it's all light. It's just the absence of light is what we call darkness. And in that absence, we find fear. And fear does have a pull. It pulls us down. It, 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 it drains us from the light that's within us. So on this map, there's descriptions of detailed words that talk about how it is that you're being pulled down. And uh, this afternoon I'll talk a little bit about fear, I'll talk about anger, desire, pride, and on up into courage. I just gave you a step, a step up is what I've done. Now, when you're in the lower levels and you're feeling that sense of darkness and you're feeling the frustration, the anger, and, and, and the pull of the earth, of the, wor the world itself, you're feeling uh, I, the best way for me to describe it is you feel like a victim. You feel, as I said earlier, things are happening to you. The truth is, they're really happening for you. 
You just don't understand because you understand why. And all it's, all it's about is to help you to wake up, to realize who you are. You follow what I'm saying? It's all happening to you just only to help you to wake up, to realize that you have the power to create whatever it is you want. You are a creator. You're not a victim. Now, I believe that. I don't know if you believe that or not, but I believe, I, I, I not only believe that, I'm experiencing it. It's unbelievable. In the last 14 years since I've gone through this transition in my, in my spiritual awareness, I'm realizing how much I've created, but then all of a sudden I realized how much I've created throughout my whole life. Because I didn't always follow the norm. I mean, after all, I was a magician. I made a living, I, I'm, 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 in fact, I, uh, my parents, God bless them, they loved me so much, and they were very supportive, but they didn't understand what I was trying to do. And I remember after I had pursued my magic as a career as a magician, that one day I came to them and I showed them my taxes. How much money I was making? I was making more money than both of them. And my dad worked for General Motors, my mother was a nurse at a, at a hospital. And I was making more money than both of them. So it, I, was, I became successful, I, I'm not famous, you know, I'm not a famous magician. I don't have to be famous. But I've made a lot of money. Now, right now, I live on very little money. I don't travel around and do the shows like I used to. And I work nearly as hard. Because I want to come and see you. No, I want to do this. This is the work I'm meant to be doing at this point in my life. I have all those experiences. And I still have a lot of my friends who are magicians who I communicate with and very famous people. I've, I've been... Been to Vegas. I worked in Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. I've done. I worked in the cruise ships. I've. I've, done, I've been. I've worked on Off Broadway, and, and I've done a number of different things in, in, in my shows. And, and by the way, if you come and see my show, it's comedy magic. It's fun stuff. It's, I make you laugh. Is what I do. If you can't tell, it's my, part of my personality. And if you want to see me, you can type in magician Steve Hart on on Google, and you'll find videos and pages of me on there. The point I'm making is, I created this. You can create whatever you want. You say, well, no, I've got these parameters here. I've got I to I do this, i got to do that. No, okay, you say that because that's your choice. That's a choice you have made. What spirit does, if you're open to it, it shows you a world of possibilities. A huge world of possibilities of things that could happen. We only live it ourselves. Did any of you see the movie, The Matrix? Yeah. If you saw the second movie, in The Matrix, mm -hmm. Neo is, our, is our, our figure, our character. He walks in and meets this gentleman who's called the architect, who supposedly built the whole Matrix, okay? You follow me? Yeah. If you remember that scene, he gets in, he's talking to the Matrix, or to the, uh, in The Matrix, to the uh, architect, and behind him are these TV screens you remember that scene? Yeah. And there are hundreds of TV screens and, and different things are happening. It's all Neo doing different things. Those are all the possibilities of what Neo could be, could be experiencing in his life. But the architect's trying try to tell him, you've already made a choice. And that's what you're going to do. And that's what, that's what happens. But I thought that scene was an excellent uh, picture for, in my mind when I realized of all the possibilities that are out there. So whatever it is that I'm experiencing in this physical form and in spirit, I know that I have a choice to change that if I should decide to do so. You understand? So, as a result of all this, I, I'm so happy. I'm living, the, I'm happier than I ever have been in my whole life. And I don't, I used to make over $200,000 a year at one point in my life, and I don't make hardly any of that now. And I'm still happy. Now, how can that be? Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you can't, you can't make a lot of money to be happy. I'm, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this, this is my choice. This is what Steve Hart is doing. Okay? So, um, let's see. Is there anything else I'm supposed to share? See, I didn't, I didn't bring notes today. I, I knew, I used to do that years ago, and I stopped doing it because I found myself reading notes instead of speaking from my heart. And now, as you can tell, I'm speaking from my heart. And, and, and because this has been a real experience for me. And I'm excited to see this thing, same thing happening with other people. 
One of the, one of the disadvantages of this awakening thing is I, when as I woke up and started having this experience, I found out there were a lot of other people still asleep. <laughs> and they didn't realize it. And uh, so that's why I've opened myself up to come and, and to speak to groups like yourself and to share with you the fact that, you know, hey, you too can have the same experience that I'm having. It's there for you because the world is telling you, no, stay asleep. It's almost just like a drug. You know, it, it does it through television, through entertainment, through sports, through uh, just all the crappy stuff that goes on in the world. Conflict, gossiping, stuff at work, all this, all the ugly stuff that pulls us down that doesn't make us feel good. And for some reason, we get addicted to it. We're, come on, give me some more. <laughs> give me some more. But when you start waking up, then all of a sudden you realize that you're addicted to this. I remember, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to share with you, I'm a little bit radical in my lifestyle. Uh, about six years ago, seven years ago, a gentleman, uh, I was at a work, workshop, and, and uh, he said, you'd be better off to get rid of your television, to get rid of your TV. And I said to myself, well, why, why would I want to do that? I mean, come on, I, did, I mean, I'm very picky about what shows I watch, I try to stay away from the news, and da 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 you know. And it didn't take very long before the Spirit, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about the television. So it ended up, I went through a move, and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take the TV with me. And I didn't. And uh, now I do have the internet. You know, I do have the internet, and I get to watch whatever, but I choose everything I watch on the internet. And I do get to see enough of what I want to see, and I do keep up with the news, with what news I choose to pick up with, you know. The point I'm making is, you, you don't, I don't miss it at all. So people talk about the TV shows or sitcoms or whatever, and even my friends who were just like the other night, they were talking about one of the magicians did something in a show, and I'm going, well, I didn't get to see it, but I, not like I haven't seen it before. I didn't mean it that way. What I meant was, there's a lot of stuff I've seen you know, out there. The point is, is that there are things you can do. Now, here's the one thing, or actually a couple things I'm going to tell you that you can do to experience more of this, and that is open up, let go. That's one thing I've had to do. I've had to open my heart, open my mind, and let go. I think it's funny that song became so famous <laughs> recently, you know, let it go, the, the, you know, the, the Disney thing. You know, but that, it's really, it's what it is. It's, it's about letting go. Letting go of the things that, that we believed in the past that served us very well at one time, but they no longer are serving, they're no longer serving me. They're not giving me what I, wanted, what I want now. And so therefore, I'm having to let go of them. So I become unattached to some of the things I used to be attached to. The second thing I do encourage you to do is meditation. And um, about seven years ago, I started meditating. I mean, as a Christian, I was supposed to pray and meditate. I knew that. But I really started giving focus to meditation. Now, I'm going to be honest. When I first started, I was lucky if I could do five minutes. It was hard for me to sit there, but I found this musical sound thing very similar to what that, but it's a little bit different. It's actually at a frequency of 528. It's a megahertz, and it has something to do with the vibration of our bodies, okay? And it has something to do with it, the pineal gland, all the whole, the whole shebang, okay? I don't agree with all that right now, <coughs> but the point I made is I listen to that sound, and I meditate. It was five minutes, and it was 10 minutes, and then it was 15 minutes, and the next thing you know, it's just, it just it went as long as I wanted it to go. And it was, no, it was not a struggle. Now today, I, I go to my meditation within a minute or two. I'm deep into the meditation, and there is a, uh, um, an altar. It's an altered state of consciousness. It really is. Now, you, I'm going to give you a quick... <laughs> I told myself I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it now. Okay. Because uh, people say to me, uh, well, what is an altered state of consciousness? What is it? We, we, we do it all the time. We just need to learn to focus on what it is you want to focus on. And if you focus on your meditation and opening your pineal gland, and if you understand the value of that, and what's happening with your chakras and alignments and all that stuff, and getting the balance, if you can understand some of that stuff, you'll find your meditations are much easier. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you an example of how you ha can be, and I will, take you in an altered state of consciousness. Is you ready? Put, everybody put your hands forward like this. Get your thumbs up in the air like this. Now, turn the thumbs down. Okay? Now here's the hard part. Put your fingers together like this. 
lock them together. Okay? All right, lock them, lock them really tight. Yeah, they're straight out like this, so like that. Okay, everybody got it? Everybody got it real tight. Yeah, no, like this, it's like this, okay? Like that, okay? You got it? Everybody got it? Okay, now here we go. All right, watch, you ready? Because what's going to happen here is I'm going to do a movement. I want you to go with me. But what you're going to understand is I somehow altered your state of consciousness. What happened? Were you able to do this? No. No. What happened? What did I do? What did you do? See, I, I actually took you to another place. I started you here and I took you to another place. And that way, that's why you weren't able to do what I just did. Okay? Now, that was a trick. It is a trick. But I don't care if you study the shamans of old or whoever, uh, there are tricks to creating elder states of consciousness. That You just got a little bit of example of what, what I mean when I talk about that. So, anyway, the point, of, the, the, but the thing I really want you to understand is do whatever you need to do, but most importantly, get quiet. Get away from the world. Disconnect from the world and start connecting to your inner being. In my workshop today, I'll be asking people to ask, fill a little questionnaire and I will be able to tell you by your answers whether or not you're connected with spirit and at what level you're at, if you choose to do so. We are also going to talk about universal laws. How many of you are familiar with what I call universal laws? Okay. We're going to talk about some of those and how they are working for you. They can actually, you can actually put them to work for you. So that'll be in our workshop today. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Yeah.